remember when I lost my mind. I remember when there were some times when I had some real nice exotic cars to pick up right off the showroom floor. I even had the privilege of driving these cars. But there was also some times where I picked up some cars that it just was crazy. Like this right here. This is crazy. So I'm going to let you continue to look at this car and I will see you after the intro. And all I remember is thinking I want to be like this. Mm -hmm. Ever since I was little, ever since I was little, it looked like fun. If there's no coincidence I've come. And I can die when I'm done. ugly car <laughs> Jody go <gone> crazy <laughs> oh man hey man on my job I run across some vehicles man I just decided man that lately I'm just gonna start videoing in and just use it as an intro on this video man I really out there in that world man traveling from the west coast to the east coast I really do run into some crazy cars there's some people man that has some crazy looking vehicles man and I've been doing this for so many years I just decided to decided to start um to start videotaping it. And I say, man, I'm going to let y'all see what I see. I'm going to let y'all laugh at what I laugh at. What seems crazy to me, I'm going to show it to you so it can seem crazy to you too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Welcome back to this channel, you guys. Uh, I got on these glasses. Well, I'm going to take them off. <laughs> but uh, welcome back to, to this channel, you guys. Uh, thank you for stopping by this channel. This is We Are Made in the Image of God. Part two. This is part two. So we learned in the last video that we are made in the image of God. We learned that the reason why we have eyes that we can see and we have ears that we can hear, we have legs that we can walk, we have a mouth and a tongue where we can talk it's because we are made in the image of God. God has those things. That's what we learned in the last video. We, we, I showed you that through scripture. We as human beings have a similarity in our appearance. But that's not the only similarity in, in appearance that we have of him. That ain't the only one. Today we're going to learn the other similarity that we have in appearance of God, other than our eyes, our nose, our, our hands, our feet, and our tongue to talk. Outside of that, we have another similarity in our appearance of God. 
God is a triune God. I don't know if you ever heard that before. To, to some of you guys, you probably heard that before. To a lot of you guys, you probably never heard of that before. You don't even know what that word is, but y'all know we're going to look that up today. We're going to get down and deep into this study today. God is a triune God, and we also are triune as well. But let's look at God first to see how God is triune, and let's see what is triune. Amen. <laughs> let's look up that word triune in the in the dictionary we're on google and we're gonna see we'll put it right there we're gonna see if god fits this definition as you look it says being three in one definition of triune it says being three in one used especially of the christian trinity trinity a triune god right so the definition of a triune god is being three in one. And we're going to see how that fits God. Look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. Let's look what that says. Let's see if that definition that we just read in, in, in the Google, that God is a triune God. Let's see. Let's test the scriptures to see if the definition is true. Is that what God is? Because the Google dictionary says that triune is three in one, right? Now look at this, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. It said, for there are three that bear record in heaven. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, right? Now let's break that down. We know the Father is God because he is our Father. Amen. He created, he's our Father because we have faith in Jesus Christ. It tells you about the Holy Ghost too. We know that that is, that is the Holy Ghost is the comforter that Jesus says that he told us, that he told us about in John 14 and chapter 16. He tells us that he was going to send a comforter, you know, and, uh, and, and he will be with you. He will convict you of sin. He would lead you. He would comfort you. He would strengthen you and things like that. He would convict you of sin. In other words, when you become a Christian now, after you got saved, after you've been baptized and you receive the comfort you receive, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, which is the Spirit of Christ. And when you receive that, that Holy Spirit job is that when you say or do something wrong, it makes you feel bad. And what it's doing is it's convicting you and it's trying to lead you, not by force, but it's trying to lead you to repentance, to ask God to forgive you of your sins. Amen. So that's the job of the Holy Ghost. We're going to talk about that one day. But anyway, notice how it talks about the Father but and it talks about the Holy Ghost. But where's Jesus? It don't say the word Jesus, right? It don't say the name Jesus. But the word is symbolic for Jesus because Jesus was the word of God. That's why in John it tells you in the beginning was the word, which was Jesus, and the word was with God, which is Jesus. He was with God, and the word was God, right? So that is Jesus. Uh, in Revelations, it tells you that his name is called the word of God. He was the word of God because he spoke word for word what God said. Amen. So when you see, when you see here, when it says the word, the word, when it's a capital W, only when it's a capital W, if it's a small lowercase W, that's not talking about Jesus. But when it's a capital W in the new scripture, in the new Testament, it is, it is symbolic. It is representing Christ. It's talking about Jesus. So here it says, for there are three that bear record in heaven. Because remember, Jesus died. Three days later, he arose. He appeared to the disciples and to so many. He was lifted up and he was taken up to heaven. And he sits at the right hand of God. So Jesus is in heaven. He's a mediator. He's our advocate. Amen. He's on the right hand of God. So the Bible says there are three that bear witness in heaven. It says the Father, which is God. It says the Word, which is Jesus. And it says, and the Holy Ghost. And now, these are the three. But look what it says here. And these three are one. Ain't that what a triune God is? Ain't that what triune God is? Three in one. So it's, it's, it's three that bear witness in, in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Don't think because it's three <coughs> that it's three gods. Because it's not three gods. It's only one God. But it's, it's, it, is, it is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. It's only one God. Even though there's a Father, even though there's a Son, and even though there's a, a, a Holy Ghost, 
these three, the Bible says, are one. It's only one God. You don't have three gods in heaven. You don't have three gods nowhere in the world. It's only one God in the whole entire world. It's only one God. And there's only one way to serve that God, and that's through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. He says, he says right here, and um, when we look right here, it tells us in Google, it said, is God a triune? Just the question is asking. And we just learned from 1 John 5 and 7, it says there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. The definition of triune is three in one, right? So it's asking the question, is God triune? There are not three gods. I just told you that. God is one divine being in three persons. Amen. God is one divine being, one divine being in three persons. I mean, when we look at this definition, this definition fits who God is. It doesn't contradict scripture. It goes along with it. So according to scripture, God consists of three in one. So, with that being said, it is safe to say that God is a triune God. Look at this Google information. Look at this. <clears throat> it says, Father, Son, and Spirit, right? Because I told you, the Son is telling you in Google that the Son is talking about the, it's the Word is talking about the Son. But it says, Father, Son, and Spirit. It said, exists eternally as distinct persons sharing essential sameness. In other words, it's saying that these three exist eternally. Eternally means, the root word for eternally means eternal. Eternal means forever. You, you don't die. You live forever. There's no such thing as death. God never dies. He's never going to die. He never will die. Jesus, he only died when he came down here because he took on our flesh. He took on our body and he died for our sins. But now that he's gone back to heaven, he'll never die again. The Holy Ghost will never die. These three persons are eternally. Amen. So he says, Father, Son, and Spirit exist eternally. In other words, he's letting you know all three of these, even though they're one, but all three exist for eternity as distinct persons sharing essential sameness there are simultaneously and eternally three in one and though the word triune has certainly entered into general usage it is listen to this an attribute of god that is a notoriously hard to wrap our, our heads around man listen that is so true when you just get saved, when somebody telling you that God is, is three and one, that don't make no sense to you. It's going to be hard for you to wrap your head around that. It's going to be hard. That's a hard saying. That's hard for you to understand. So let me give you an example that will help you to understand a little more better, to see it in a different light. I'm going to give you an example today that we all can relate to that we all every one of us is familiar with so look at that look at that on the screen what is that ladies and gentlemen that's an egg right that's an egg i know it says boiled egg on there but it's the same thing it's an egg do you know that one egg consists of three there's three in that one egg they all have their distinction all three, right? <laughs> so, you see that egg? Now look at this picture. Look at, when you look at that picture, right? On the far right side, that is called an eggshell, right? When you look at that yellow part to the left in that egg, that is called an egg yolk. The egg yolk is sitting inside. The white thing that's around the egg yolk is called egg white. So within that one egg, you have eggshell, egg yolk, and egg white. And all three of these make one egg. You just call it egg. You don't call it, 
Uh, excuse me, y'all. Do y'all have any egg white, egg shell, egg yolk? No, you just say, excuse me, y'all. Do y'all have any eggs? <laughs> right? Because that one egg consists of all three of those things. You understand that? So the same way that that one egg is the same as one God. But just like you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and all three are one, that egg white, that egg yolk, and that egg shell, which are three, when you put it together, they're that one egg right there. See? We go right back to that egg. That one egg consists of three different things in them. Y'all understand that? That's the same way. That's that's the same way with God. You know, I know a lot of times we say Trinity. That word Trinity is not in the Bible. The Bible speaks about the Godhead, which consists of three in one. You know, that Godhead represents the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. You know, the Bible teaches us that we also are triune. Did you know that? Because remember now, we are made in the image of God. We resemble God. We learned that we resemble God because we got eyes we can see, we got ears we can hear, we got a tongue we can speak, we got hands we can we can clap, we got legs that we can walk. God has these same very things. We have a nose we can smell, God can smell too. We are made in the image of God. We learned that on the last video. And on this video, we are learning that we also resemble God. We have a similarity in, in appearance because the same way that there's three persons and one God is the same way that it's three of us and one of us. <laughs> Amen. I'm trying to put that in a way where you can understand. So the Bible tells us that we're made in the image of God in Genesis 1 26. We already talked about that in the last video. So the question is, are we also triune? Yes, we are. And right, let's see what the scripture tells us about this. Look at Genesis chapter two. We're going to read verse six or seven. Look what it says. Now, remember, this This is how, remember, uh, God said, let us make man in our image. So the man that he's talking about at the time was Adam. Adam was the first man that was ever made. So when God is making man after his own image, look how he made man. Because remember, his father, son, and Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now, remember, he said, let us, us. He didn't say, let me make man in my image. He said, let us make man in our image. So that R is plural. It's not singular, meaning that it's more than one, right? And in this case, it's three. So when he was saying that, he was talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We're going to make him in our image. Amen. But it says, verse 6, it says, but there went up. Now, this is God getting ready, getting ready to make man in his image, right? And look how he made us. Look how he made man in his image. He said, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So just like we just saw, Father, Word, Holy Ghost, those three are one. Just like I showed you, eggshell, egg yolk, egg white, those three are in one egg. Well, us is also three. I'm about to show you the three right here. Verse seven. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. God formed man of the dust of the ground after he wet it, right? That, that dust that he formed is our body, right? That's this body. So that's one. Inside of that body, there's a soul. That's two. And now he's going to breathe the breath. He's going to put a spirit inside of us, which is the breath of life. And this is what's going to cause us to be a living soul. Right? Look at this. He says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. That's the body. That's one. He also have a soul in there. That's two. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The breath of life is three. And man became a living soul because he already had the soul in his body. Right. The, 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 the last thing that he put inside that man's body, he gave him the body. He put the soul in there. And the last thing that he put in there, which is number three, is the breath of life. With that, that is that spirit. He put the breath of life in him and he became a living soul. All three of those things make one of us. We can't live without either one of them. If the breath leaves, we're dead. If the soul leaves, we're dead. The Bible teaches us that when we die, that our body goes back to the dust. Look how all three separates. 
It teaches us that when we die, our body goes back to the dust from where it came from. It tells us in Ecclesiastes that the spirit, it goes back to God, which is the breath of God. It goes back to God who gave it. And then number three, it tells us that the soul is either going to go to heaven or it's going to go to hell. So all three of them got three different places they're going to go to. But all three makes one of us. So that means that we're triune just like God. That's why Paul says this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Look what he said. <clears throat> he says, and we're verse 23. He says, and the very God, he was talking to the church. He was telling them, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, means fully. And I pray God, listen now, he said, he, he's, he's letting them know he's about to pray for them, but he's about to pray for all three. All three, that, all three things that we consist of. He says, and I pray God, your whole spirit. Notice that's a lowercase s. Because that the, the 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 capital S is the Holy Ghost. That's a different spirit. But when they use the lowercase S, that lowercase S, when you look that up in the Greek, for those of you that said uh Wanda, and I think the husband said that they downloaded that app. When you look up this verse and you look up that spirit, it's going to tell you in that concordance that it is the breath of life, the breath of God. <clears throat> so that's the breath of God that God breathed into Adam when he formed man out of the dust. He already had a soul in him. The only one thing that was missing, he already had two things. He was missing that last thing and that last thing, which was the breath of God. And once he breathed the breath of God in his nostrils, that's when he, Adam became a living soul. Amen. That's what made him complete. Amen. So he says, and I pray God, your whole spirit, that means the breath, your, the, the breath of light that's in you. He said, and soul, the soul, which is the real you, the, the, the spiritual being. We're going to talk about that on the next video, but the soul is the real you. That's the one that holds all five of the senses. It, 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 when, it, when your soul leaves your body, all five of the senses leave that body with you too. So wherever you go, you can see, you can hear, you can feel, you can taste, you can smell, all that, right? Um, that's the soul. So he said, I pray God your whole spirit, which is the breath of God, your, whole, your soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he talks about our spirit, our soul, and our body. So we, we are made in the image of God. There's a similarity in our appearance. Just like God is triune, we also are triune because God made us in his image. Amen. So we learn, so we learn so far that we are made in the image of God, our father that we do share a similarity in appearance of him. We can see, hear, walk, talk, and smell just like our heavenly father. And we also learn that God is triune and so are we. We're just like our daddy. Ladies and gentlemen, we are learning today and yesterday. And every time we watch this channel, we are learning about our father we are learning about our god we are learning about our creator we are learning about our lord and that's the very thing that he wants us to do is to learn of him look at that look at matthew chapter 11 look at that look what jesus says let's break that down jesus says in verse 28 we're going to read 28 29 and 30 this is very important for us to read. This is very important for us to know <clears throat> because a lot of people, they don't really know this and they're not doing this, you know, and they're robbing themselves from knowing their father. He says in verse 28, this is what Jesus tells us. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Verse 29, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, let's break that down. Verse 28. Jesus is saying, he's telling everybody, don't go to this person. Don't go to that person. Don't go to that God. Don't go to this God. Go to him. Come to him. Amen. He says, come unto me, all you that are laden and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. 
When we are in this world, we carry a heavy load. The load is heavy. We, we go through a mess. You know, we got a lot of tribulations, a lot of burdens that we're carrying on our back. And, the, and, and, and what makes it more difficult is because we try to fix these things ourselves or we try to take our burdens to other people for them to help us. But God is telling us, the Lord is telling us to come unto him, all of us that are heavy laden. And he said he would give us rest. Well, how are you giving us rest? Because he wants us to take our burdens and lay it down at his feet. Right? Because he's going to give us rest. It's like me carrying weight on my shoulder. You know, it's like I remember I used to bench, not bench press, but squat, you know, uh, 225, sometimes 300, you know, and trying to walk with that is heavy. And trying to squat and then come back up is heavy. But I remember we used to do like a superset that we start off with big weight, right? And we go down, we come up, we go down, and then you have a guy on this side, you have a guy on that side, they would take off some of the weight. They would take off that way, he would take off this side, he would take off that side, and it got a little lighter. And you go down, you squat, and then he'll take off again, and he'll take off again. Pretty soon it was real light. It was so light that you could walk. It was easy to do the last workout. Well, that's the same thing with it is with the burdens of this world. Don't try to figure them out yourself. Don't try to work it out yourself. Don't take it to Allah. Don't take it to Buddha. Don't take it to Mary. Don't take it to Father. Don't take it to Pope. Take it to Jesus. Amen. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And he says, I will give you rest. Jesus said he will give you rest. Verse 29. He said, take my yoke upon you. Because you're still going to have a load. You're going to go through some trials and tribulations. But you're going to be able to bear it. Because he said he won't put on you more than you can bear. He said, take my yoke upon me and learn of me. So he's letting me know. This is what I had to learn when I was in prison. Because when I was in prison, everybody... <clears throat> is running to the law library to study their case, to find out what the new law is, to see if anything applies to them. Because if it applies to them and it made retroactive, that means it'll work for them too. So this is everybody hope in prison. They run to the law library and then they're all day, all night. And when they come out of there, they're so stressful because they didn't, they spent hours in there and they didn't find nothing to help them on their case. They even come in more frustrated when they find something that's identical to their case and it was passed, but it wasn't retroactive, meaning that it don't fit them. It just fit that person that it happened, but it's not bringing it back to them. So it's not going to be able to help them. And they come back and they mad, they frustrate, want to fight and everything. Hussing, screaming, punching, kicking lockers and everything. That's stressful. That's a burden to carry, right? Just having that time on your shoulder is a burden. But Christ is saying... Bring me your burdens. Don't When you bring it and you give it to God, that means you walk away and you leave it at the feet of Christ. And whatever little burdens you may have after that, you can handle that. And he's telling you, give me your burdens because he wants you to spend. He don't want you to spend your time trying to fix it. He don't want you to spend your time trying to, trying to work it out. He wants you to spend your time learning of him. You know what he said? Verse 29. He said, take my yoke upon you and do what? Learn of me. He wants us to learn of him. Ain't that what we did? We learned that God is a triune God. We probably never heard that in church. We probably never heard too many people talking about that, but we learned that today. God has led us to this channel to learn that today, that God is a triune God. And we also learn today, if we haven't heard it before, that we also are triune. Just like God consists of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we also, just like the egg consists of the egg white, the egg yolk, and the egg shell, we also consist of the, 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 the body, the breath of God, and the soul. And all three of these things makes one of us. Amen. Uh, he says again, verse 29, he says, so we learn these things. We're learning these things. And that's what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to spend time with him, hear his word and learn of him. He wants us to know him. Amen. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls. Amen. 
when I was going to that law library in prison trying to figure out my case, man, I was stressful. And one day I came back to you. Know, I mean, this thing, it was tearing me up. I mean, it just made me so frustrated. I just spent four, five hours in this law library. At the end of the day, I didn't find nothing. I go back in there again a couple of more days, searching on the computer, trying to read these books, read these cases. I think I found something. I go look at this. I shepherd this. I look at that. I look at that. And I find out, yeah, they passed it, but they didn't make a retroactive. That's that's a low blow. You know, that's like getting hit in the stomach <laughs> unexpectedly. You know, you walk back to the unit, you're so frustrated, you're so angry, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, you, you ain't at rest. And one day I came back to the unit, and a, a Christian brother who received a dream about me, and he saw me coming down with my law books in my hands and stuff like that, and he said, hey, Brother Joe, Brother Joe, come, come here, man, I got to talk to you. I said, hey, what's going on, brother? He said, listen, I, I don't know what you're going through. I don't. He said, I don't know nothing about your situation or whatever you're going through, but he said, I had a dream about you. He said, the Lord told me to tell you to rest. Say so you're going too hard. Spend time with him. That's all I could tell you. And he walked off. He didn't know what that meant. But I knew exactly. I knew exactly what he was talking about. God was telling me, get out of that lie library. You're spending four, five, six hours in there every day. By the time you get back, it's the end of the day. You got to hurry up and take a shower, fix you something to eat because they're going to close the doors. You got to be in your room. And when you get in there, you're so tired you want to go to sleep. You ain't read my word all day. You've been chasing that law library. You've been chasing, trying to figure this thing out. Take that stuff, bring it to the altar, bring it to me, lay it down, and spend time learning about me. That's what he want us to do. Read that again. Take my yoke upon you and learn in me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. When I did that, I did find rest to my soul. I was at peace. Trusted in God, spending time in his word, I was at peace. Now, I wasn't frustrated of that thing about what was going on in that courtroom. And ladies and gentlemen, God worked things out for me in that courtroom. I didn't have to do anything. God worked everything out for me and, and brought me right out of there. I'm still supposed to be in prison. I ain't there today because God performed a miracle and got me out of self. Hey Amen. Why? Because I, I trusted in him. I started learning of him. He says in verse 30, he says, for my yoke is easy and my burden, my burden, the world's burden is heavy. But he's telling you that my burden is light. Amen. So today we learned that we are made in the image of God, that just like God is a triune God, we also are triune. We consist of three, the body, the soul and the spirit of God. Amen. On the next one, we're going to get into the soul because we also are spiritual beings, just like God. We are a spiritual being that was created by God. Amen. And that is the real and that is your soul. That soul is the real you. We're going to talk about that on the next Bible study. Thank you guys for stopping by. I'll see you on the next study. Man of God, woman of God. I know life is hard, plus you're working like a dog. Problem after problem, everybody got them. I expose mine, ain't got time to hide. Bring them to the light, put them in front of Christ. Let him handle that, that's my only advice. We live in this world, but we not of it though. But while we're here, sometimes we go through the struggle low. A lot of bills, man, and I ain't talking buffalo. Rent to water to, and I ain't got enough for dough where you at god i'm on the edge bro i ain't got a dollar no prep flow i'm a mess bro i think i'm about to let go i'm filling up the chamber and it's 38 special i can't wait no more i can't take no more ain't got faith no more not feeling safe no more the word said that you would never leave me if people see me suffering then why would they believe me oh believe Right now I need you Your thoughts are not like ours Don't think like we do So maybe you're just thinking of another plan Of how to strengthen my spirit Make me a better man Patience is a virtue That virtually nobody got Satan is a sucker, he's a lollipop Had my life in a wreck like a body shop I'm feeling like Daniel Some wax on, wax off No karate chop 
Excuse me if I'm coming at you sideways Pray to you on Monday, now it's Friday It's been five days I'm impatient I'm tired of waiting I can hear the voice of Satan Jesus, it's you and I I'm rebuking suicide The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit loves me and we're unified The devil tweaking, trying to see your boy dead But I attack him with the word, knock a horn off that boy head I need safety, Lord, come and take me Hebrews 13, 5, you won't forsake me I ain't giving up, that living water filling up Overflow after overflow, I think I need a bigger cup Blessing after blessing, I ain't even stressing Behind every thunderstorm is a life lesson The lesson that I learned is to rely on you You were always there, so how could I deny the truth? Now I see Satan had me in the blindfold I'm repping Jesus, Jesus, Jesus till my eyes close uh.